Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. This is Gina with Impressive Glow Spray Tan and Teeth Whitening Training, where my ultimate mission always is to help women, moms, single moms, learn how to start a side hustle as a spray tan technician or a teeth whitening technician and learn a little bit of financial independence in that process. So, like I said before, have you had a client where you've done everything in your God-given power to make sure their spray tan was beautiful. You've blended the hands, you've picked the right base color for that tan, you've put the finishing powder on, you've doubled the, you know, you've done a double coat over certain areas of the body that were a little bit lighter. Have you done everything to the T that you were trained to do um, that assuring that that spray tan should be beautiful and flawless and you call them the next day and they send you a picture and you're like how the heck could that have happened what is that I have no idea I don't remember that on her skin I don't know what happened well there are a few things actually I shouldn't say few there's quite a few things <laughs> that a client can actually do to cause issues with their spray tan and I see common ones that and I see like all these in these different spray tan forum groups that I'm in um, and I see a lot of consistent ones um, that instantly to me I look at it and I boom I know what it is um, and I see so many new spray tan technicians get lost and get scared and get um, upset and racking their brains over the things that it could have been so here are a couple things that your client could have done to mess up that spray tan in between the time they left your studio and the time that it processed. Um, so hopefully it'll get ease your brain, uh, ease your heart knowing, and you'll be able to look for these things in the future and think, oh, I remember Jean talked about that. That's what that is. All right, uh, a couple different things. First, uh, I know that we always tell our clients, you know, wear a long dress, wear sweats, wear um, something to wear, um, they're not gonna touch their skin or that you know nothing can actually get on their skin. Um, and in the summer months, and if you live somewhere that's hot, sometimes that's not possible. And girls will come in shorts or they come in dresses, um, which of course is fine. But did you think about what happens when they leave? Um, when I see girls come in in shorts or short dresses, I kind of get like an instant anxiety attack and I always ask them, does your car have leather seats? Do you have cloth seats? And do you have a towel or do you have something you can put underneath yourself on your way home? Think about it, okay? If they're wearing shorts and they're, the backs of their thighs are on a leather seat right after you've given them a spray tan and that sweat against that leather, what do you think that's gonna do to those the back of those thighs? I've seen it, I've had girls call me and send me pictures of the backs of their thighs and I remember racking my brain and then realizing she had shorts on when she left and I asked, do you have leather seats? And yes, she did and it was a hot, hot day and she just, it was just, she just sweat, you know? And then there wasn't really anything she could have done. So think about that. If you have someone who comes in in shorts or uh, sh uh, shorts or like a, a dress or skirt or something, remember, our job is to think of the things that can happen once they leave and the things that are gonna you know maybe could happen or could go on so make sure you ask your clients hey do you have leather seats and if you do or even if you have cloth seats i would probably say put a towel down um a blanket make sure they're dry of course um, but put some kind of berry in between those seats and the backs of those thighs because that solution touching anything is just not the business on a drive home all right <laughs> also when it comes to driving home and I've actually seen this as well. If you don't dry your client well enough, and if let's say if they're wearing a tank top and they're not wearing a sweatshirt like you asked them to, and they get in that car and they, you know, just like when, when you tell somebody don't put a bra on because you don't wanna see them struggling with that bra and messing up that solution, did you think about them getting in a car and yanking on a seatbelt? Absolutely, I have seen it. Or where their seatbelt is just too tight on their skin or you know, just flush on their skin because they have a tank top on or a tube top. Um, so think of that as well. When you see those things happen in your studio, it should be red flags as they're walking out the door. Hey, make sure when you put your seatbelts on, you got something that's like, you know, a barrier in between there. Um, now it doesn't happen for everybody, you know, but these are just little things that could possibly happen. Um, I know and I'm very aware that your spray, your client should be as dry as possible. We put finishing powder, but you never know if that's really too tight. It can totally affect it and show the lines. Hopefully it only affects the bronzer, but sometimes it could. So just think about it. 
a lot of times you get your clients who call and say that they may have stained palms. Don't look at my palms. I've been cleaning my spray tan stuff, so they're dirty. Um, but your clients could call and say, hey, the uh, palms of my hands are completely stained. And you've done everything as a technician to make sure that doesn't happen. You put the barrier cream on, you wiped it down, all those things. You've told her to wear sweats to, to sleep and everything um that you're supposed to tell her but at the end of the day if she goes home and she touches her spray tan all over her palms um, now of course we know that those are ju that's just superficial staining and they can get that off pretty well um, but a lot of times you're going to get that call so just make sure you are very adamant with your clients that they do not uh, touch themselves as much as possible in their sleep um, i know that's hard to control but by wearing sweats and a sweater um, and covering as much as that skin as possible will help that uh, and prevent that as much as we can. So that was another one. Um, another thing is I always tell my clients to be prepared to wear sandals when they leave um, because of course we don't want them to put socks on. But what happens if they get in their car and they have an errand to run and they don't want to wear sandals or they need to put socks and shoes on. Uh, that's an issue and I've seen that happen, um, not to me personally, but I've seen it happen and talked about in Facebook forums uh, for spray tanning uh, where you can totally see the line of that sock and that's basically what they put a sock on right after that spray tan and there's no um, oxidization to get to the skin to process that spray tan uh, and I've seen the little uh, circle around that ankle and you can totally tell that it's a sock line so that's another thing make sure you're you know if they sound so simple but they're things that you really do need to remind your clients not everybody has had a spray tan before and understands exactly what needs to be done or what can and can't be done um, so things like that are simple enough to just remind your clients don't put any socks on tonight just go with it also <laughs> what I see happen often because I spray tan at night is women go home after work then they cut or after work they come and see me get a spray tan then they go home and do all the mom stuff as much as we tell them to spray tan and chill they're going home and doing the dishes they're cleaning the um the kitchens or bathing the kids all those things any splatter of water or soaking of any kind of body part in water as that spray tan is processing is going to interfere with that processing of the spray tan. Um, so think of those things. So one of the, or those things are in my um, confirmation instructions, my pre and post tan instruction is no dishes, no bathing the kids, no bathing the dog. I joke around with my clients all the time and tell them if they need a note to not go home and do dishes for tonight, I will write them a note. So just make sure that um, when they go home, they're not near any splashing water. I mean, shoot, even going outside and spraying the grass down and the possibility of that water getting on their skin could possibly affect that spray tan. Now, of course, again, I know that it could just be affecting the bronzer, but what if it was like literally right after she came and saw me? Um, it definitely could affect that. So think about those things and make sure your client is spray tan and chilling as much as we can get them to, right? Also, what if you call her to do follow-up and she just says, my spray tan, I can't even see it. Like it's so light. Um, I know you, it looked like you went really dark on me, but when I rinsed it this morning and I woke up and even it's been 24 hours and it's just, it's not as dark as I thought it would be. And she sends you pictures and you're like, what the heck? Why didn't that spray tan um, absorb on her body as it should have? Nine out of 10 times also, your client showered too soon before she came to see you. I think it's the craziest thing. <laughs> I, I've had clients literally come in, tell me they didn't shave and they're bleeding from their leg from just shaving before they came to see me. Um, so a lot of times too, because again, I spray tan at night, um, women wanna go home and freshen up and feel clean. Um, but I always let my clients know, look, it's nothing I haven't smelt before. <laughs> it's nothing that I'm embarrassed about. Come directly from work. Do not shower, do not rinse off. Even if they just get in the shower to rinse off, a lot of times that's hot, hot water and we're killing those dead skin cells or um, they do put soap on their body. Even if it's, just, if it's just residual soap from important areas that they've washed for the day, um, that can trickle down into their legs or their arms and that could leave um, some residue and some film uh, in those areas. So think about that. Be um, insistent in your pre and post tan or your pre instructions that state do not rinse or shower 
minimum six hours before you come see me because that any alteration of that skin um, from being dry all day long is definitely going to interfere with your solution and last but not least there is another one that i've seen happen and they get home and again if they're not wearing sweats um and they're wearing shorts or a dress or something like that i have seen a dog lick or a cat lick interfere with a spray tan it is <laughs> It happens. <laughs> so um, just a friendly reminder, I kind of joke with my clients about that, um, but it's actually definitely educational and I let them know, Sp sit, go home, spray tan and chill, keep the dog away from you, keep the cats away from you because they love the smell of it, they want to lick it, um, and that definitely can interfere and bring that spray tan right off. So I hope this helps. Um, I hope there are things that you guys maybe didn't think of, but remember you guys are professionals You are the experts and sometimes it is not your fault You've done everything you can to make sure that, that spray tan is beautiful for your for your clients and there could be issues where your client could have done something and it went all wrong. So some of those are the things that I've seen, I've experienced myself, or I've heard from other spray tan technicians that have happened. Um, so it's just some little advice and some things you guys can think about um, when you start to troubleshoot issues the next day when you check up on somebody. So I hope some of these things can help you narrow down some things that could have happened. So again, like, share, subscribe, do all the things so that my kids think I'm cool because that's, that's what YouTube is about, is just making sure my kids think I'm cool. Uh, thank you guys so much for subscribing to my channel, for leaving the comments, for following me on Instagram, um, coming in and getting training. I have surpassed my mission. If you guys have seen my mission video that I did, I wanna say it was March or May of last year, I wanted to, my mission was to train 100 women and help them gain some financial independence. And we did that during a pandemic. We uh, trained 100 women in both spray tanning and teeth whitening combined. We've Well now, it's over 100 women and I am so, so grateful and so excited to see so many of their stories um, taking off now and now that things are kind of opening back up, people are starting to get to work, women are starting to understand how much money that they can make in these businesses, again, without having to waste time and money in beauty schools and use two different beauty services that are not regulated by most states, check your state, um, and that don't require a state license to perform. So what an amazing journey this has been. I've only been training for a couple years now and I am so blessed to do what I do. So thank you guys again. Again, remember if you're interested in online or one-on-one -on -one spray tan or teeth whitening training, please let me know. My website, I'll put all the contact information. Um, down in the description box. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Talk to you soon.